All right. All right. We are back for the uh, local hour. Our first local hour of the year, man. And we've got my guy here, Herb Howard, from the Bigs Media, man. You can follow him on Herb at Herb Howard 411 on Twitter, man. Uh, there's a lot of cool people in the Bears beat that I am a fan of. But this guy right here is, is, is a really good uh, person, uh, one, one of the first dudes who I met on the beat when I did that Vegas game a couple years ago. So, um, Herb, man, welcome to the show. My brother, what's happening, man? Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Mama, I made it. I'm, I'm glad you on here, man. This is uh, I told you about this idea maybe like a couple weeks ago, and I told everybody, man, we're doing it different. For, I'm not gonna hold you this year. Uh, we just want—I really just want to make this like kind of like the closest thing you get to a barbershop, but with like niggas is actually knowledgeable though. You know what I'm saying? Not, Thanks. not, people right. not just spewing shit around. You're right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly uh, what I want to do, man. So, um, we'll bring uh, Mikey and Dante in later in the interview. They had a couple questions, um, for you, man. But let's just let's just start off, man. Uh. You have an interview with QB1 dropping soon. Uh, you and you and uh, Justin Fields. I'm looking forward to that. We are officially about 48 hours away from this game. Now, I know the talks we had at camp. Uh, how are you feeling about the Bears in this first game? Look, man, it, I feel okay about the Bears, right? I feel okay. A little better if they were able to, you know, stay healthy throughout the course of training camp. The offensive line that they put together, I thought that would have been a good group. They were able to develop some continuity throughout training camp and preseason. I'm talking about going left to right with Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, Cody Whitehair, Nate Davis, and Darnell Wright. Unfortunately, due to injuries, they didn't really get to, to be on the field that much. So now they're going into it with a different group. You got Lucas Patrick inserted in the center. You're moving Cody back over the left guard. And Nate Davis has been mostly out of the lineup the entire summer, whether it's injuries, personal reasons. He missed that yesterday. He was a full participant today. So we'll see, man. But I, I, it's hard to feel as good as you would like to have felt about the offensive line coming in. Same thing with the defense. You know, they signed DeMarcus Walker. You were hopeful that, you know, he would be a, a, a key figure in terms of them being able to get after the passer. Then they add Yannick Ngakwe late. They obviously brought over um, Tremaine Edmonds to be, you know, the leader of that defense in the middle. Talk about Jaquan Brisker having another year. That play next to Eddie Jackson. But all those guys, again, missed the majority of the summer and so the majority of training camp. So, didn't have a chance to get chemistry, so I feel like it may take them a couple games to get up to full speed. But I feel okay about where they are since those guys are back and healthy and ready to play. That being said, man, are, are, are we are we ready to get predictions for the game? I don't know. We're not going there yet. We we gonna get there in a minute. I'm, we gonna get to the predictions right. uh, when I bring my guys on. But I know we were talking yeah. about, um, you know, I think it was a camp. It was me, you, and Greg Braggs, and we were both saying like we're not picking the pack. We're not picking the Bears until like you know they actually beat them. But I kind of feel like. It, the, the main feeling, at least for me uh, and a lot of Bears fans, I see is a lot of panic and and not really for, for me personally. I'm, 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 I'm cool with it. I think they will win the game, but I feel like it's a lot of PTSD. I feel like a lot of people are not thinking with the football mind, just thinking, oh, it's still the Packers and not thinking that that big bad man is over in, New Ru in, in East Rutherford, New Jersey right now. So what are some actual challenges that you think this current Packer brings that could make things a little dicey for the Bears? I think they bring the ghost of four and the ghost of 12. Like, I think, I know you're saying, like, that's that's not how we should be thinking about this, but I think that's real. I think it's real for the entire fan base of Chicago. I think it's real inside Soldier Field. I think it may even be real inside of Hallis Hall. Now, I know they got a bunch of young players and a bunch of new guys who don't know nothing about this rivalry. I talked to one of the rookies in the locker room this week, and he was like, yeah, I don't know nothing about this rivalry. I was like, bro, don't say that to nobody else. Like, and don't, don't don't tell no other reporter <laughs> that they're going to make you look crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't say which one of them it was. But I think that even, even with that being said, I think it's just hard to get over the fact they've lost the last eight. I think you're talking about like 24 to the last 29. Like, it's it's just been absolutely crazy. And so for me, probably is a little PTSD, but it's, it's just impossible for me to say, I'm picking the Bears over the Packers until I actually see them do that. Um, and that's even – I think Justin Fields is better than Justin Love, right? I, I, I think that's the case. I don't know that to be we true. I haven't seen enough of Justin be. Love <laughs> to say yeah. definitively that that's the case. But hopefully he's not – like, can Justin Love at least – I mean, Jordan Love, can he at least not be – a first ballot Hall of Famer, like can he? Right, can can he like? Can I personally want to be terrible, but like I can handle him being Dak. Like I, I just can handle be him great. being a second ballot Hall of Famer. Like go in on your second <laughs> chance. Like don't don't. I don't even want him. I don't. I don't want him anywhere near Canton. I want him to be. And the only close he get to Canton is driving there. Like I don't want him nowhere near there. 
my God, it's it's crazy. Like they can't can't run it back again, right? They can't do it yeah, again. They, lightning don't strike three times. That's what I'm telling people. That, that's what God, I'm hoping. So. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, no, I mean, they, they got Chris, Christian Watson is out, so you know the Bears yeah. got a chance. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears win. I, I probably, I, part of me really thinks that they should win, but even in thinking that they should, I'm not picking them to do it. Yeah, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm gonna get my prediction in a minute when we bring Mikey and Dante on in a second. But I think like the main story here, and this is what I want to talk to you about because the Justin Fields thing. Justin Fields is is make a break for I don't think it's make a break for his career, but I do feel like we have to see something. It is year three, yeah. second year in this system. He has weapons now. He's got DJ Moore. Chase Claypool uh, is, is is back. Uh, Flu said he had a good week of practice. You've been updating your your, your, your flu. Pers- I mean, your, your Claypool. Chase Claypool, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got him. You know, you've got Darnell Mooney. You got two tight ends. I think he has everything he needs. So, my 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 fear here is I have to see it. Like I don't think I'm gonna be fully at peace with it. So I see a full season. That's just as a Bears fan, I've never seen that from a quarterback. Uh, what do you think is like the? What do you think would be an acceptable season for not just the fan base, but also if you're Ryan Poles, you think okay, I don't have to go looking for what I got to do to get up to get uh, Caleb Williams. We've got a guy here. What do you think Justin has to do for that? Yeah, I think it's mostly an eye test. No fans have a hard time with that, and they want you know, you know, statistics to be placed on. And I, I will give some statistics on the back end of this answer, but I think it's mostly an eye test. It's, it's seeing his his how comfortable he is in the offense. It's seeing his progression in the offense. How quickly does he get the ball out of his hands? How quickly does he find answers to what the defense is doing to him post snap, pre snap? He certainly knows what he wants to do offensively pre-snap. He's even able to read what the defense seems to be doing. But post-snap, the defense shows you zone. They bring pressure or they show pressure and drop in the zone. How quickly can he find those answers? That's the next step. Can we get a couple of examples of, you know, late in the half or this first half or second half, Bears get the ball. They got to go, you know, 70, 75 to at least get a field goal. You know, can he can he get the offense down there in, the, in a two-minute process? Those types of things um, are, are what you're looking for to see, you know, has he taken that next step? Now, if you want to put some numbers on it, listen, I know he's talking about 4,000. Some people want to see that because we've never, ever, ever seen in Chicago, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, 17 games and – who knows if he's going to play 17 games. He runs a lot. He gets hit a lot. Quarterbacks get hurt a lot. So I don't know if he'll play 17. But if he does play 17, is it cra- – like 3,400 should be the minimum, right? You talk about 200 yards yeah. a game, that should be the floor. And so I would say at least 3,400 is what you're looking for in terms of in terms of passing yards from him. Now, you know, touchdowns, we'll see what that looks like. But I expect him to be, you know, mid-20s with that as well. And – You know, I think that Justin has everything he needs. I think that Ryan Poles and his staff has done a pretty good job to eliminate a lot of the reasons why Justin Fields couldn't, you know, necessarily reach his full potential or why you couldn't have a full, accurate assessment of his play because all the things that are going on around him, I think they've done a good job of of addressing many of those reasons, getting him a legitimate number one receiver. (laughs) pushing that wide receiver room down from the top. So now that he's properly slotted where he belongs, Chase Claypool, you re-sign Kokomet, you bring in Robert Tain to bolster that tight end room. You try to do some things to address the offensive line. We talked about the injury concerns there. But I think for the most part, you've done what you could do in one offseason to address the reasons that Justin Fields couldn't necessarily reach his ceiling. I think uh, at this point, with him being the second year of his of this offense, we should see the best version of of, of, who, of who JF1 is. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, agree with that one, man. We're going to bring in the guys right now, uh, Mikey and Dante, to the uh, the room. They have some questions to ask you, man. Uh, Dante, Mikey, welcome back to the show. I don't know if I – here we go. There we go. There we go. This is live TV, people. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, Mikey, Dante, man, y'all got some questions for her, man. Let's, let's, let's get into it. All right, what's good, bro? Nice to finally meet you. Tell you what's the word, good brother. Appreciate you, man. Been watching y'all do y'all thing for a minute, man. Salute. Hey, man. Same with y'all. We look. We really fuck with the bigs, bro. Y'all always show love. And one of the questions I had is, much like us at the barber chair, you know, you all, you, you yourselves when you're out there. So, like, what is it like being black in that space? Because I know for me, baseball is a little different. And like a lot of times when I go in the press box, I'm the only black person in there. So, like, what is it like from your perspective being in the press box and being in that atmosphere? 
Yeah, I, I, I look at it as a responsibility to to show up authentically, right? To show up who I am as I am. So I'm I'm in there. I'm I got my J's on. I got hoodies on. I walk like I walk. I talk like I talk. Um, and I think that representation matters, right? I think that I look at it as a bit of a, of a responsibility to show that I'm very, very capable of doing my job. I'm good at my job, but I don't want you to look at me as like some exceptional Negro. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like right. everybody, yeah. like you usually look at people like me. Oh, he got, he got, you know, tattoos on his neck and he got hoodies and J's and Tim's and shit. And it's, you got an idea of who those people are. And I want you to understand that while you can look at me and say, oh, that's my equal, that's my peer, that's my colleague, I, he I, he do his job very well. Don't look at me like, oh, he must be a different one. No, I'm just like everybody else from 71st and Jeffrey. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want you to understand that. And so that's how I show up. I think that's that's just a part of, of, of my responsibility. I carry that with me. But it's also, it's also like, well, I, I, I'd be lying to say I don't think about it, but it's also just the ability, it's like second nature, just the ability to be who you are and not be like moved by it's a bunch of you know middle aged white dudes around me like whatever I see y'all cool we hear the same thing but I'm gonna show up as I am every time. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. And just one more question uh, before I toss it over to Mikey. Um, just give me one player, one player on, on both sides of the ball that you uh you know really really looking forward to this season. Six man, Kyler Gordon on defense. I think he's gonna have. A monster, monster year playing that nickel, man. I know he still wants to be outside. He ain't made no, you know, misconceptions about it. He would still like to do both if he could. But I think it's eliminating that dual responsibility from him and allow him to focus on just playing the nickel is going to be huge. For him. He's got all of the skills that you need. He's got those capabilities. He's got great instincts. He's physical. He wants to stick his nose in there. I think he's going to have a absolutely monster year for the Bears at the nickel. If you flip over to the other side, I know the connection between DJ and Justin. That's that's legit. I think DJ's going to have a huge year, but I think yeah. Darnell Mooney is going to lead Bears in yards per catch. I think Darnell Mooney is going to like, I don't know if Darnell Mooney is ever going to have a catch like this less than 10 yards. Like, he's going to be continually making play on the field. Every time Moon catches the ball, it's going to be 15, 20, 30, 40 because of, of what DJ Moore is going to bring to the offense and the attention that he takes away is going to allow uh, Getty to, to, to scheme up Moon in a way that gets him on, you know, linebackers or strong safeties or even, you know, nickel corners. And he's going to be able to get better into those. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a huge season from, from Mooney. Not to say he's going to have more yards or more catches than DJ. I don't necessarily think that's going to be true. But the catches that Moon does have, they're going to be big ones. Okay. Definitely. Mike, no, nice, nice to meet you, G. Uh, my my number one my number one question is outside of I think we all are you know we're all interested in and focused laser focused in on seeing Justin Fields growth. Outside of Justin Fields, what is the main storyline you want to see from this iteration of you know the the Chicago Bears? The twenty you know it's the second year of the Eber Eberflus regime, you know. So what are you looking yeah. for outside of Justin this year? Yeah, I'm glad you said the second year of the Eberflus regime. I think that he came in that first year, and I do think he was able to establish a culture and establish a standard and expectation for how he wants his guys to play. And I think for the most part, they absolutely bought into that. You saw guys, you know, flying around the field, hustling to the echo of the whistle. They getting sideline to sideline. Like, you saw guys playing through the white, through the white lines. Like, they, they was doing all of those types of things. I think they they bought into the his principle. I don't think he gave them a choice. Like, either you're going to buy in or you can get on. You know? And I think eventually they kind of bought into that. And I thought I saw a team that was grossly outmanned and, and you know, devoid of talent, but they were still competing. They were still in all those games. And I think that now that you have this interest of talent, if you can add the talent and keep that same mentality – then you should have a pretty dangerous team, right? So if you can get, you know, the top end talent, you brought in the legitimate number one receiver in DJ, you bring in an all pro type middle linebacker in Jermaine Evans, you bring in all the different teams, you got the top 10 pick at right tackle. Now you should be able to say, okay, now we got the talent to go with the mentality. And if you can marry those two things and stay healthy, this team should be playing some meaningful football deep into December. 
Yeah, I think I think that's all. I think that's all we're really looking for. I don't think any of us have <laughs> Super Bowl aspirations this year. We know it's a right. there's a there's a growing process. But I look back, you know, as it as it pertains to Eberflus, I look back to that that home game the Bears had. I think it was about two years ago when uh, the Colts came and and Nick Foles was starting at QB for the Bears. Yeah, and yeah. I just remember thinking, like, holy shit, these motherfuckers on the, on the Colts defense are flying to the ball. Kenny Moore, Darius Leonard, like, they were going crazy. So I think, you know, with with the with the additions that they made at Tyreek Stevenson and Dexter and, you know, K- Kyler Gordon and Brisket, I think we're going to probably start to kind of see some of that long, athletic, and just flying to the ball. And like you said, if, they, if they've bought into the hits principle, then you know, it's going to be, it's only going to, it's only going to elevate, you know, the program more going forward because that's going to be expected out of everybody. Now they got some dogs on that side of the ball, Mikey, for real, bro. Like they got some dudes that can really disrupt what the OC wants to do. They can get their hands on the ball. I think Tyreek is going to lead this team in picks. I think he's going to have about six of them. Now I also think he's going to get his young ass cooked a couple of times. I think he's going to get caught with his hand <laughs> in the cookie jar a couple of times because yep. he just, he's so aggressive. And so he, he going to bite on some double moves. He going to see some out route coming to the win, try to jump in and let his man streak up the set. He going to gonna be a couple of times going to be like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? But he's also going to get his hands on the ball because he's going to make those breaks on the ball. So he's going to make those kind of plays. I think that Jaquan, I've said this since last summer, I think that dude has everything you need to be a perennial pro ball performer. I love 100%. the way Jaquan plays the game. It's just about him staying healthy. This concussion thing. I asked him about the concussion things and you know what, what whether or not that would influence him to kind of change the way he plays. And he was like, I don't know how to play no other way. He's like, I, that's that's all I can do is fly around and and, and, and stick my face mask in that. So he's gonna continue to do that. Hopefully, you know, he can stay away from concussions and some of those injuries. But he's on the field 15 games. I can't see him not being a pro bowl. That dude is just nasty. Told you what I think about Kyle Gordon. I'm a huge Jalen Johnson guy. I think he's going to continue to ascend, and hopefully he's able to, you know, get that attention from the Bears. Bojack was having a phenomenal season last year before he went out. If he can pick up where he left off, that back end could be as good as anybody's back end in the league. And I don't, I don't mean that just I'm a Bears fan and I, and I cover the team. They legit. Like, they got what you need if Tyreek is who they think he is and who I think he is. So, Man, that defense is crazy. And you talk about Tremaine Edmonds just being a multiplier in the middle of that defense. We ain't seen nothing like that since, like, you know what I'm saying, to have a dude yeah. with that style. I mean, this dude is humongous. That's the first thing you think when you see, like, damn, this dude, big as hell. And then he can get sideline to sideline. He can get 30 yards down the deep middle. It's crazy. And just his length in and of itself, closing those windows, impacting those slants, taking away that, that, that hole in between the linebackers and the safeties. Man, he's a multiplier that's gonna help everybody else out. So, you know, the defense front gotta gotta do their thing. But you look at you mentioned Coach Ibrahim and his past defenses, they never really had like no crazy, you know, big name DNs, right? Yeah. And so yeah. it was just, you know, that I secondary mean. had some they had interior <laughs> defensive. And so I think that if they if this defense can stay healthy, I expect this defense to be really good. I mean, like they might be like top ten good. They if they can stay healthy, they should. That would help a lot, man. Uh, one last, you know, kind of two-part question before we get a, get you up out of here, man. It's prediction time. Now, of course, me, Already Mikey, been. and <laughs> me, Mikey, <laughs> and uh and Dante will do our full. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do full more breakdown after this. Oh, I know Mikey got a lot of shit to say because he's been going crazy in the group chat the last couple of days. But uh, who do you got winning on Sunday? And also, what do you think the Bears record will be? And is it playoffs or no playoffs for the guys? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Fuck. You know what, man? I just got done uh, doing a, a, a hit with WGN Radio, and I was telling them the same thing I told you at the top of the show, that I ain't picking the Bears to beat the Packers until they do. But I didn't just talk myself into the other shit now. Now I'm picking the Packers. <laughs> That's how it be. That's how it be. That's how it be. Come to the dark side. Let's start talking no, about Brisbane, you know Gordon, and he's yeah. like, oh, shit, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm still not doing it. I feel like, I feel <laughs> like Tony Dungy. Hey, hey. You, know, you know how Tony Dungy spent that whole Super Bowl? We're like, oh, we not kicking the devil. We're not kicking the devil. And then he woke yeah. up that morning like, we kick it to that nigga. And he was like, house. <laughs> like, yeah, like, exactly. I'm not going to do that. I'm still not picking the Bears to beat the Packers until they do. I, I want the Bears to win. I hope the Bears win. I certainly think they can. It would not surprise me if they do. But just just due to my 
to my past trauma, you know what I'm saying? My, 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 my history of abuse in this relationship. Uh, <laughs> I'm picking the Packers, man. I'm going Packers, uh, you know, 24-21 uh, seems, seems reasonable. And uh, unfortunately, I think I think they come to Soldier Field and, and do it to us again, man. Oh man, that's gonna be an interesting day on on, on the web the next day. What do you got the finishing like overall? Where where you got the Bears? I think the Bears. I, I got them somewhere between you know seven wins and ten wins. I think so. I, I, I've settled in right around nine. I think they could be nine and eight. Okay. I think that'll lead them right to what I was saying about having meaningful football in, in late December. And now you know how they go. You no know, division leaders, wild card in the hunt. I think the Bears yeah. will be the, in that in the hunt column, and I think that's a good place for them to be yeah. at this time. And it wouldn't surprise me if they sneak into the playoffs and get one of those wild card spots. I think that would be dope. I don't think they are in a position of any kind of significant run in the playoffs, but I think they can sneak in there. I think they can sneak in. So I'm I'm getting them right at right at right at nine and eight is my prediction for this team. I think that would be a tremendous upgrade. I definitely think the NFC is the JV league of the NFL. So I definitely think there'll be a shot for them to be, to get in there. And like I've been telling people, for my personal travel schedule, I want that, that if that last game in Lambo is like, you know, uh, clinching, I will be there. If not, I will be in sunny California, not dealing with that. <laughs> for I'm not week looking 18. forward to that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that week 18 at yeah. Lambo. Yeah. It's probably going to be super at Lambo, cold. Snow freezing. Feet. Yeah, pull so. a vortex. But, but, but if we got some on the line. Then it'll if feel we got some on the line. I'll be there. I'll be hyped to go, man. But uh, Herb, man, thank you for joining us. It's always good to talk to you, man. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday for the game. Let the people know where they can follow you on Twitter and Instagram. Everything you got going on. Most definitely, man. First of all, thank y'all so much for having me, man. I appreciate it. Fan of what y'all do. Y'all, y'all do it the right way. Y'all do it super, super dope. It definitely feel like kicking back in the barber chair and, and, and just shooting the shit with the with the guys, man. But like you said, uh knowledge boo guys that know the game you know, on the football side. So uh, salute to everything y'all got going on. You can follow me at Herb Howard 411. Keep up with my work. Uh, you can follow uh, the Bigs on Twitter at it's the Bigs. I do got the Justin Fields one on one that's going to drop on Saturday. Uh, okay, it'll be uh, on the Bigs website. It'll be on the YouTube. Uh, you can follow uh, the Bigs dot us uh, for for that. But that'll be dropping on Saturday. Definitely looking forward to it. That was a cool conversation. It's kind of pulling the curtain back on on who Justin is. It's not. Uh, it wasn't super football-y, you know, how many yards you're going to throw for type shit. Just a little bit of, of, of who he is. And so uh, I was super cool, man. Looking forward to that to that dropping. But, again, thank y'all for having me, man. It was super dope. Went back too fast. I'm like, I got to go already. Y'all kicking me out hey, man. already. My fade, ain't, we will- my fade ain't even done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this will not be the last time we have you on here, man. So we definitely going to have you on here uh, again during this season, bro. We definitely appreciate you. So I, I'm going to holler at you on Sunday, G. Most definitely. All right, bro. So we're going to get into, our, uh, get into, you know, get into the rest of our, our you know, our Bears. You dig here, man. We're going to do our um, preview. Not really. What's the, what's the, the preview joint that we're going to be doing here, man? So it's time for, for picks. We got to thank you, Dante. Super producer Dante. I f- hell, I forgot about the rundown. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. This is, this is, this is why you have people uh, do stuff. But um, shout out to Herb Howard for joining us. As you see, this is the rundown. We're going to get more in depth with our Bears Packers preview. We just had Herb talk. We're going to give our predictions, uh, our record predictions. We're going to talk about the state of the Chicago White Sox, which uh, I'm understanding that Mikey's going to have a great time talking about. And unfortunately, we have to talk about the one winning team in Chicago, and it just happens to be the Chicago Cubs. We're going to get into that. Uh, but let's just get you know right back into our Bears Packers talk here on the local hour here on I'm Not Going to Hold You. Uh Scott, Mikey, and uh, Dante here with y'all, man. Um, let's just talk about it. So, Mikey, how you feeling? Because I know you've been in the chat. Uh, you, you've been dealing with a little nervousness. Uh, and now I feel like the last couple of days you switched to confidence. Which ways are you leaning 48 hours into kickoff? Oh, man, it's, I'm a nervous wreck. I think that's the state of being a, a Bears fan, you know. Um but I'm leaning towards a Bears W. I think Christian Watson being out is a huge is a huge loss for Jordan Love. Um, you know, regardless of what the rivalry is, and you know, lately it feels like it's just a rivalry in name, being that they beat us eight times in a row. Like we 
you know, the numbers are something crazy. Um, it's going to be a hostile environment opening, you know, opening day with the expectations that the Bears have as far as, you know, behind Justin Fields, you know, right shoulder. Um, the fan base is expecting a lot out of Shorty. Um, and I think they're going to go into that stadium, you know, charged up. So I think the Bears win. I think it's not, I think it's going to be a classic black and blue division type of game. I think we're going to see a lot of running. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. I got the Bears winning 24 17, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, and I guess that's low scoring in today's NFL. You know, when you see people throwing 30, 31, but, you know, for us to put up 24, is, that's high scoring for us. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, I think 24 17 Bears. Um, and you know, if if we're going to get to you know, I see, I know Scott, we're going to get into your predictions as far as win total, Dante. You know, like just you know, going off what Herb said, if he got anywhere between eight to ten wins, then this is a game that you got to win to get there. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get this one at home against uh against the Packers. So, um, I got the Bears winning, and um, you know, I'm I'm definitely uh, I'm I'm locked in. I'm probably won't be able to sleep. Yeah, no, I I definitely got the Bears winning, and I got them putting up twenty seven. Uh, that's that's right, yeah. Talk that talk, Dante. That's what I'm talking I got the, about. I got, I got the Let's Bears go. 27, 27, 14. and the reason at this Ooh. point the Bears, bro, I'm I'm really I'm really at peace with it. Like, and what I say by that, and I know this is scary, and we always talk about Bears PTSD and all of that, but at the end of the day, everything that polls is done has been what we've been asking for as Bears fans to actually build a football team for him to try to work. And, you know, we're still working on the trenches. But in this year, year two, like you said, year two of the Eberflus era, I think coming into it, I think they're going to – Justin's going to put on the show. Like, I think, you know, a lot of the emphasis on him being a <laughs> one read passer, well, now he's in year two of the system. And now he's more comfortable in the system. He has better weapons, more people he can trust that he can uh, utilize and put out there in space. I think uh, we talk about Tyler Scott, the uh, receiver from Cincinnati. I think, you know, him and Mooney work in the middle. Him and Cole, you know, Cole Komet. I think a lot of people are going to be able to eat across the middle, uh, as JR said a couple episodes ago. But, no, I think, you know, like I said, I don't think Jordan Love is going to be bad. But I think coming into the week one in Chicago, game of the week, I think Justin is going to really put people on notice that, nah, like, I, I'm not just a runner. Like, he's going to – they're going to they're gonna scheme it up. I think it's going to be a good game. Well, uh, I'm with you, Dante. I am letting go of all my fear of, of, of the past. You have to. You have to do that. I'm, I'm encouraging – I want everybody – I'm looking at the camera right now. I want everybody <laughs> in Bears Nation to hear me and hear me. In the words of – uh. Ebony Maul on uh, Infinity War. Hear me and hear me good. This game right here is going to turn the tide. It is about time that we take the monkey off our back. It's time to let go of that fear. Aaron Rodgers is not going to walk through that door. He's just not. We don't have to worry about that anymore, which I am happy that we don't have to worry about. Brett Fall should be in a Mississippi prison right now. He's not walking through the door. We don't have to worry about Brett Favre. And it's time. We're going to have the best quarterback in this division, and I feel like I can say that for the first time in my life with no, uh, without lying to myself. I think that this team is going to put up points. I think that Justin is going to put on a show. I think my man is going to throw for uh, – he's going to have three touchdowns. I don't know if he's going to throw for three. I think he's going to have – Throw for two. He's going to take one to the crib. And I think this is going to be an electrifying game. I'm going with the Bears 27 to 10. That is my Ooh. score, 27 to 10. I think that, uh, you know, Christian Watson will not be playing. That's going to be a big um, – Big loss for the Packers. Romeo Dobbs was questionable all week. We don't know how big he's going to be. And we can keep talking about, you know, we know the preseason thing. Everybody was like, well, what did Justin show in preseason? You know, Jordan Love showed this. And not to say that I wasn't – I didn't like what I saw from Jordan Love. I thought Jordan Love, for what preseason was, wasn't bad. But the lights are bright. It's, it's his show now. This is not one of those games where he's coming off the bench for Rodgers because Rodgers is hurt or they're sitting people out towards the end of the year this is his show 
and it's gonna be loud up in Soldier. Like this game is gonna feel like a college homecoming game to me. It's gonna have a real college atmosphere to it. It's gonna be 80 degrees on Sunday. Everybody gonna be feeling good. They're gonna have Bears Legends in the house. I think they confirmed that uh the Buckets is gonna be there. You know, first week of the, of the, of the season is usually like a like alumni game. Where all the alumni the Mongo tribute. The mm-hmm. Mongo tribute. It's gonna be fired up. I'm not patriotic at all, but when that anthem hit and then fighter jets coming out, you're gonna see me like Nick Johnny and in, in, in the press box. You know what I'm saying? I'm had that, that Denzel tear from glory. So it's gonna right. be a good one. And I, I I think it's time for the Bears, man. I think the Bears win went 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 big on, on Sunday. Bro, I sent you that video from the all-star game, boy. When them jets, when them engines <laughs> get the rumbling, yeah. Stand up and salute them, motherfucker. You ready? You ready to run on the field? But nah, bro. It's it's a new era, and a part of it is as fans, you gotta let a lot of that shit go. Like yeah. I understand what's happened in the past. Uh, I'm not saying it because I necessarily believe in like juju and all that other shit. Because at the end of the day, the best players are gonna play and perform. And so this team, you know, has been a prepared team. We've talked about the hits principles. We talked about everybody buying in. And at this point, I. I believe Justin Fields is going to take that leap that we expect him to see, uh, that we expect to see. I think it's going to happen. I mean, there's no better, there's no better game for him to take the leap, you know, or no better start against the, against the Packers. Um, I just there's a lot of uncertainty for me as far as it comes to the O line. I know Nate Davis will be playing. Um, I just feel with everything, um, football more than any of the sports, any of the pro, you know, American sports that we follow. Timing is everything. It's all about timing. And those rep- the repetitions matter. The, the practice matters. The preseason matters as far as building that continuity, especially when you're, you know, when the number one wart last year for, or, you know, for the last two years was protecting Justin Fields. You know what I'm saying? He can't thrive unless, you know, they, they're protecting him. So, um, there's just the uncertainty there. That's where I was, you know, tossing and turning and like, fuck, what is going to happen? Got me rolling Caleb Williams and Michael Penix and tape. Like, I don't know, this motherfucker and I might not do it. But, um, you know, I think I think this is perfectly set up for the Bears to have a, a, a big week. It, I don't, you know, I don't think it's going to be as much as a blowout as, as both of y'all think. But, uh, you know, let's get it, man. They lace them up the same way and Aaron Rodgers is not there. I echo them same sentiments. Who's that? Yeah. Packers defense underachieved last year. I know who that is. I know who that is. That's that's my cousin JP. Shout out to my cousin. That's Shout very out true. To everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Shout, Shout out, out to, to my mother in law. Shout out to my mother in law, <laughs> Irene. <laughs> Shout out. We appreciate all the love. Look, look, look at Dante with, with the production. Skills. You know what I'm saying? Doing my thing, bro. It's only look, gonna get better. Dante. It's only gonna get better. I'm telling you. Look at Dante with the production <laughs> skills. Uh yeah. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, you know, showing love. Uh, let's get into record predictions for the Bears, man. I, I, I'm, I'm going to start first. I think what Herb said was perfect. I can see this team going anywhere from seven to ten wins. And uh, I watched uh, Big Cat. Uh, he did his his Bears prediction, and he had him come out to 10-7. I was looking like, yo, it makes a lot of sense. I think um, I'm going to go on. I'm going to – I said seven and ten. I've been saying seven and ten. But you know what? Since we feeling positive today, I'm going to take it up a notch, man. I'm going to go with Herb said. I'm going nine and eight. And I don't know if they'll make the playoffs because it's going to be tough. I don't know. It might take 10 wins to get you in, but they will be an in the hunt team. And I'm, I'm talking about a real in the hunt team. And it's going to be at around the top of the in, graphic. At, at the, the top, top of the, of the graphic. Up. Right, right, right. Not the niggas who are technically mathematically still in it, but we really right. know they're not going anywhere. Like, not that type of thing. Really in the hunt. And I think that's a massive upgrade from last year i think that um seven wins to me is the number that i have for me to not be disappointed with this season and i think anything less than seven wins means that justin fields was just not good and we might actually be in the market for a quarterback i think if justin takes let's say justin takes a leap leap just takes a leap leap double digit wins like that there's so many different ways this season could go and it all rests on the shoulders of justin i think justin is going to have if healthy i think he'll play at least 15 games if we're just basing off the last two years and i think that this team is rallying around him uh nate davis is going to be playing on sunday um the offensive line is going to be playing you're going to have lucas patrick will be your center uh cody told cody white will be left guard um 
we're going to have an actual pro offensive line. I think it's going to help tremendously actual wide receiver, NFL caliber wide receivers. And if this defense is good as Herb thinks it's going to be, as, as I think is, it could be, really depends on the pass rush. Who knows, man? This division, you know, despite how uh, Detroit won, despite the fact that I think they'll be 2-0 and next week, this division is going down to the end of the wire, man. So I'm going to go Bears 9-8, and eight, my final answer and i will say they will get the seven seed i'm feeling good today like like mitch said and fading pool it's love on the court day love on the court. <laughs> yeah i'm sure i love i'm sure i'm showing love, love today no i i agree with that 100 percent. nine and eight was my prediction in a wild card berth uh i think eight eight wins is my floor because i think justin is that good with added weapons they'll win at least eight games and so i think if he takes that leap leap then we're talking about an 11 win team uh, possibly winning the division, yeah. but yeah, last year Detroit made the uh, Detroit, well, no, Detroit didn't make the playoffs, but uh, they were nine and eight, and they, yeah, they kept Seattle, them in the hunt all season. Them. Seattle, yeah, yeah. Seattle got in, yeah, yeah, Seattle got in at nine and eight. So that that nine and eight range is going to get us in, a, in into that wild card berth. So I think now nah, nine and eight, but like we like we've been saying the whole pod, like this, <laughs> it, the whole show, this is about um, seeing those pop players from Justin the eye test as far as a passer passing the ball. Uh, like your cousin said, bro, not holding the ball, getting it out, um, going through your reads. You should year two in the system. I know your receivers are new, but your receivers are better. So you should be more comfortable in making your reads and putting the ball where it's supposed to be. And uh, we've seen him when, you know, when he's confident and just fires in there, he throws one of the best balls in the league. So I think this this is the season, bro. I think this is the year the, that polls and Eberflush and everybody, we continue to build on it. And, and I think it's going to go up. No, oh, yeah, I'm 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 rocking with y'all. Y'all got me believing this shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm riding with nine and eight, and I can see a ten. I can see a ten and seven. I mean, I'm very big. I know, I know. You know, a lot of people they don't they don't take into the account, but I'm very big in strength and schedule. I'm very big in strength and schedule because if you look at the numbers, the math is the math, and you know the facts are the facts. Last year, um, and you know. Six out of the top 12 teams that had the easiest schedule, they made the playoffs. Um, you know, you had teams like Cincy, Bucks, Niners, Chiefs, Chargers, and Seattle. This year, the Bears are sixth uh, in top 10 for um, for strength of schedule. You got teams like Atlanta, Saints, Niners, the Bears, the Steelers, Seattle, Eagles, and the Packers that are there. Um, this is a very winnable schedule. I mean, if you pull up the schedule and you look at it, you can talk yourself into fucking 11 wins realistically yeah, if honestly, Justin Fields yeah. takes that if if Justin Fields takes that jump. Um so I'm riding with 9 and 8. I do think we can get into the playoffs on 9 and 8. It just all depends how you get there. If you beat the yeah. NFC teams, then um you know, then definitely, you know, you got the upper hand. You got to you got to take care of the division though. I think we haven't won a division game in like <sighs> I think it's something crazy. I think it's like two full seasons or something like that. So you know, <laughs> like you know, yeah. so maybe maybe we all got a no, little not bit. two full seasons because we won the Thanksgiving game against Detroit. Because I remember I was there and I was like, oh, that's right. I thought Nagy was gonna get fired if they lost and the niggas yeah, winning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was in. Yeah, I was in North Carolina for that one. Yeah, I remember that yeah. one. I mean, so but it that's been a long ass time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's been over a full calendar <laughs> season. So, um. At, you know, I just want to see from Justin just the anticipatory throws, trusting in his arm and trusting in his reads and getting out there. Don't break the pocket too early. There are a lot of times where the pocket is clean. Stay in that pocket, make that throw. Um, but you know, I think I think I think this team can can really do something. And what I anticipate to be a weak NFC this year. Yeah, I, I agree with that, man. Um, before we wrap up our NFL portion, uh, Mikey, let's give your your, your parlay of, of, of the week for for people, man. Before we wrap the the NFL so, part up. So for my parlay of the week, so I got, I'm gonna give you a prop bet since we're talking Bears, Bears, and, and and the Packers. I love the value on Aaron Jones to score a touchdown. Um, it's at plus one sixty. Throw a hundred dollars, you win one sixty. Um, in nine career games against the Bears, he has eleven total touchdowns. Um, we know now that with Christian Watson being out, um, you know, you got Romeo Dobbs still kind of hobbled. He's questionable. He might be out too. We do not know, yeah. but we know that the, uh, that the, um, that we know that the Packers are going to run the ball. We know that the Packers are going to try to run the ball. Let's be, let's be honest that the run defense and, and our front line is our weakness so far in the defense. Um, so I love Aaron Jones, uh, anytime touchdown. 
Um, and then for our parlay, so for our parlay, we're gonna go. It's a plus five fifteen. Um, it's a four leg parlay, so we're gonna take the Ravens minus nine and a half. They gotta win by ten or more. We're gonna take the Steelers. We're gonna buy the point and a half on the Steelers. The Steelers currently right now, depending where you shop at, are plus two and a half. We're gonna buy the point, and it's gonna be Steelers plus three and a half, meaning the the Niners can win. They just can't, you know, can't beat them by more than three. Um, and we're going to take the Commanders and the Jags on the money line, win outright. That's, pl- that's plus 515, $100 when you 515. That's some drinking money. That's some shoe money. That's some phone bill money. Um, so with everything that I give you all, trust me, I'm betting it too. So we'll come back on Monday and we'll see how we do. Definitely, man, definitely. So stay in tune with that. Mikey going to be getting y'all money all all season, so uh, definitely stay in tune with that, man. So that's what we got for the football. We're gonna wrap it up with our last two topics. It's probably gonna take the next twenty minutes. Uh, we're gonna talk a little Chicago baseball, unfortunately. And you can see the look on Dante's face. That means, nigga, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> the Chicago White Sox. <laughs> <laughs> the Chicago White Sox have had to say that this has been the season from hell would be the biggest understatement ever. Anything that you could possibly think will go wrong this season has went wrong. Now, I think, you know, if you watched the couple episodes we had of our He Gone podcast, we're like, oh, well, they got to get rid of, they got to cut the bait. They got to get rid of Kenny. They got to get rid of, of Rick. They got to get rid of all, both of those guys. They got rid of both of those guys, which gave the fan base excitement for about an hour. Maybe only 45 minutes before Mr. Bob Nightingale and his being head ass came in and destroyed all our moves and told us that they're going to hide from within and bring Chris Gitz. I also wanted to say in the chat room, I kept telling you guys that he was going to get hired. I know we all was trying to keep uh, hope alive. Mike, you was trying to keep hope alive. I'm like, in the words of Joseph Budden, you can fool a real, you can't fool a real nigga. You can fool them. You can fool the ones who aren't paying attention. I saw it coming. I have officially boycotted them. I don't have my Dodger hat on right now, but I do see my Dodger hat right there, and I will be uh, rolling with them, even though they're going to get run in the playoffs too because their the pitchers are hurt and their other good pitcher is going to prison, and we'll talk about that in my goofy mog of the week in this episode. <laughs> and Mookie uh, just got hurt too. And Mookie yep, just Mookie's got hurt too. So I'm not expecting much from him either. But I will give Mikey the floor. He is the, the biggest White Sox fan of the three in our group chat. He is the one who's most engaged with it. He's been in since since birth. I'm going to give you the floor, my man. What, what are you feeling on our team right now? Uh, if there's a level below apathy, I'm there. Um, it's tough. It's it's. It's tough. I've watched more. You know, I got the Cubs game on right now. I've watched more Cubs baseball this year than I have White Sox. Um, just the whole product on the South Side, like it's embarrassing to it's embarrassing to the sport. Um, Jay Reinsdorf is moving very Dan Snyder ish for my NFL fans. You know, um, just from the process. I know Scott, you're big on process. The process of of firing, you know, Rick and Kenny. But, uh, you know, going to Chris Getz and how he got there and just hearing the press conference in which he made it sound like Chris Getz was reinventing baseball by what he was saying. You know, like, oh, the way he's <laughs> teaching the game. And have you seen some of the guys that we have have come up? Yeah, I'm watching. Who? Nobody, nobody has come up through the system to be anything but Luis Robert, you know, Um and that's a grown ass man that was playing in Cuba with men. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real. He was just getting getting his feet wet here in uh, in the states. So um, it's embarrassing. It's it's hard to get behind that team. Um, he's when you have an owner publicly flat out say before the season's even over, before we even get into September, I'll tell you. He said it exactly verbatim. I'll tell you for what we will not be in the show here on Tiny Sweepstakes. We do not, not want the best player in baseball. Let's, let's we do not want the best player in baseball now. ever. Yeah. We will not be given 10-year contracts and pitchers, but we will try to improve the team. Like, you've said it right there. You're just going to stay status quo. You're still going to remain cheap as shit. And how is the team going to get better? There's nobody near, you know, maybe they bring up Coast and Montgomery next year, but even then, like, you can't, you can't say that we're trying to stay competitive yet sell off key pieces from you know the bullpen and you start we got to get about three to four new starting pitches 
He probably got to I, – I would say it's time to move on from T.A. at shortstop. You're going to yes. need a legit second baseman. You're going to need, you know, Andrew Vaughn for everything. You know, that's a Golden Spikes winner, you know, in college and everything. For everything and all the hype he's gotten, what is the he The nigga's huff. The nigga's huff. Let's just call it Exactly. Him. But, okay, but he came up through the through 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 our minor league system. What is what did Chris Getz do there that warrants a promotion? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like Jerry Reisdorf said, the players that have come through the minor league system up to the major league club, like they're a different caliber of ball player, and we got some good players. None of those motherfuckers have done anything. Not one person. Sevi Savala asked, Andrew Vaughn asked, uh Garrett Crochet injured. Um who else? I go Gavin Sheets ass. It's just just Ooh. white, white and ass. That's what they look for. <laughs> yeah. And and enter Chris Getz. You know what yeah. I'm saying? L- Lenin Sosa, Jose Rodriguez, Yerman Mercedes. There's Carson nobody. Fulman. Carson, Carson Fulmer. Fulmer. Yeah, if we go if we go back, if we go back to Carson back Fulmer, names. if we go back to Carson Fulmer, there's no position player outside of Luis Robert. You know what I'm saying? That that has come up through the system. Yeah, you could say TA a while ago, and that's cool. But I think you know that it's it's over for that. We know what it is. We know what we need going forward. Um, from from a defensive position at that shortstop <coughs> position, and from an offensive you know standpoint, I, I I get that you get on base, but gee, you can't have one fucking home run. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's just there's nothing really to get excited for, and then. They blatantly us. They're playing in our fucking faces because they said what we be saying. What fans say, you're hearing from the owners talking about some. Well, the you know the the truth of the matter is this is Chris Getz in his opening press conference. Well, the truth is we do play in the AL Central, so there's always a chance. Like yo, get the fuck out of here. When are you gonna have the temerity, the fucking balls to feel the competitive roster? That you say, no, this is our division and we're going to be at the top every fucking year. And until they get people that want to have that mindset, then I'm checked out. Dante, how you feeling, man? You the first one who well. jumped off the ship. <laughs> very, oh, yeah. well. <laughs> very, very, very well said, brother. Mike can use a lot of them Joe words. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you but no, nah, bro, um, it, it's time. Like, as White Sox fans, it's one of those things. And I said this to... um somebody at the all-star all-star weekend because we were just talking about free agency and stuff like that like it gets to a point where you recognize the patterns and you know who owns your baseball team so like at this point you know what a team is going to do it's very rare that the team just comes out of nowhere and says hey we're gonna spend money like usually teams that do that they'll get a new ownership and then that ownership group is telling you hey this is how we're going to spend like you see cohen with the mets it's like, okay, yeah, I blew all this money. I'm going to blow another bag to get rid of him and reload my uh my roster. With Jerry Reinsdorf, it's always going to be the nickel and dime. Uh, how can I sneak into the playoffs and make sure I turn a profit? That's what it's about. And the internal hires are just another sign that they don't actually care about the process. They don't respect the process. They got a waiver uh, to not – to not interview any minority hires because Kenny Williams was the GM for so long, which is absolute bullshit. But I mean, Reinsdorf is one of those, he's one of the good old boys. Like he's in good with the owner. You know, a lot of the younger owners don't like him, but when you have that tenure in such a small, small close knit group like that, you know, his his name does ring bells in baseball. So um, as a fan of the White Sox, you got to just be honest. Like we caught lightning in a bottle in 05, so in, until you get something similar, don't expect much. Like you're not going to see them put the effort into building the ball club. This is the team that said no to Bryce Harper. Uh, this is the team that nickel and dime Manny Machado and tried to sign his brother in law like that was going to do something. Uh, like with them the, big the moves they weren't on MLB TV. The <laughs> idiotic <laughs> moves, like yeah. like just just the the idiotic moves that they made, bro. Kenny Williams has traded away so much talent. You talk about the people that haven't come up through our system. Uh, you know, we can uh, we always talk about the Tatis trade, but even not even you know attempting to do something with Marcus Simeon, who is now one of the best second baseman in the league. Like that's somebody who came through your system that you missed on. You didn't see that talent. You didn't cultivate that talent. And um, now we got you know we need to start talking about the pitchers and that you know the injury history because we're having a lot of guys get hurt too. Um, so, so not even you know, from the pitchers, position players, soft yeah, tissue, but, everybody. Yeah, that, but that's just I, they don't stretch. Like one thing, like I, I, I always, <laughs> yeah. I always, I always bring up the Braves, bro. But like 
when you see teams every day and you see their preparation, you see them come out and go and stretch, you see them go out and run, you see them working on these things, like the White Sox don't do that. Like they, they've never been a ball club to do that. And that's why you see, like you said, all the soft tissue, all the pulled hamstrings. Um, the questions about the leader was fucking pathetic. And everybody just had a terrible answer, even though oh, like yeah. to Ozzy, to Ozzy Guinness credit, he was like, he was like, this guy can't spell high in English. Why are you asking him if he's a leader? Like, no, it's very, it's very, it's very true. It's very true. I, I, I was hilarious, Wait, though. Ozzy's hilarious, Ozzie, but that's Ozzy funny, but he also he's he, honest, he, but also yeah. you know, you can't be campaigning for a fucking job and then say you don't want the job. Like, let's just be real. Yes, They're not exactly, gonna hire you. They got yeah. they just not fucking with you on, on that level. But I see in the comment here it says, Why would Chris Guest announce Pedro was coming back when he didn't have to? Very true, very true. What has Pedro Grafal done to Ooh, warrant terrible. coming back? To warrant coming back, he admitted. He admitted that he didn't instill his culture from day one in Arizona. He admitted that he could have been a little tougher on them. Like, like I don't get it. And it, and it's it's like you said, Dante, this in Chicago, but Jerry's mindset with all these owners, he wants to win it his way being a quote unquote smart market team in a big city. You're in Chicago. We look at how, look at how we, we will go crazy for a fucking Bears to be fucking to win eight wins this year. You know what I'm saying? We will fucking we were. It, it's crazy how fucking invested we are into sports, and for an owner to play in our faces. And to be honest, you know the Cubs fans and and everybody can say whatever they want to say about oh the stadium's not filled or what what what. Listen, there are diehard White Sox fans. There are people that spend money every year. There are people that do go and like baseball and know about the sport. And to be playing in their fucking faces and to disrespect them and to continuously put out poor product and have a poor process and to be so arrogant in, in, in refuting it back when, you, when you're pressed about it. Let me be honest with y'all. Would y'all give a fuck if they moved to Nashville? No, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And, and, and that's fucked up because we are White yeah. Sox fans. I'm yeah. at the point where I could care less because if y'all not going to do it right, then what the fuck is the point? What is like, what is the point of 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 holding on to something if y'all are yeah. just going to, you know, if y'all are just milking it for what it is for revenue? You know and what we I'm saying? We didn't. We the fucking Cincinnati Reds. You know Pretty what much. I'm saying? Bro, and we knew this was like a, a cowardly organization when they canceled Sox Fest. Like the one. Man. The one I, Couldn't even face the fan base. The one opportunity fans get to voice their opinion about what's going on, you can't even do that. And then when Jerry has his press conference, he handpicks the media he allows in the room. So nobody's going to press him. And like he did question. during the Getz press conference. Couldn't face the yep. music there. And the fact yep. of the matter is this, man, is it's run by a cowardly organization. That's just really what it comes down to. And I know there's Cub fans out there who like to laugh. And I'm not mad at y'all laughing. I'm be real. As White Sox fans, we talked a lot. We, we definitely... Correct. We definitely talked more than we probably should have. So I'm not mad at, at them getting their stuff off. But don't laugh too hard because a lot of you niggas are Bulls fans, okay? And it's the same dude, okay? And so in one way or another, this affects you. As a White Sox fan, like you said, Mikey, we we, we love this team. Like, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to allow them to hurt me anymore. It's like it's like a woman who broke your heart, right? You know, you still, I still, you still got love for it, but I'm just not allowing it anymore. I got, I have memories with the White Sox. They won the World Series on my 17th birthday. It doesn't get any bigger than that. So I feel bad for younger uh, White Sox fans because at least the three of us, we're in our 30s. We'll always remember 2005. No matter mm -hmm. what happens in the history of this crappy organization, we'll always have 05. I remember those nights in October. I remember what I was the, mat, the exact moment I was doing when Scott said to get the walk off. I remember the Paul Lee Grand Slam. I was there. I was at game you two. I remember, I remember my pop surprising me and my grandma's. We were at my grandma's house, and I remember. And just just so y'all know, I'm gonna break it down, and I've told the group chat. I am a diehard White Sox fan. I have been since I was born. So I was born premature my mother had me when she was 18 years old i was born preemie they left me in the hospital i obviously i had to be in the hospital in the incubator for an extended period of time but my mother was so fixated on you know being by my side and being in the hospital that i forgot the hospital that i was i, I see it on the birth certificate i forgot where i was born but they had a they had obviously like a sponsorship with the white Sox at that time and they felt so bad that my mom was just literally looking at me through the glass the whole time 
that they gave her and my father two tickets to get up out of the whole, to get up out of the hospital and to go to a White Sox game. So it was a White Sox Brewers game back when the Brewers were still in the AL Central at that at that time. And when they came back to the hospital to visit me, there was a birth certificate that it's I, I want to say it's Illinois Masonic that I was born at, but on the background it was on a White Sox paper that says from this day forward, you know Michael Anthony Anduhad, you know Michael Anthony Rivera is uh, a Chicago White Sox, you know, fan and a part of the organization. And that, that meant something to my mom. You know, to this day, my mom still has season tickets. Like, my mom still goes. She sent me a picture with Jerry Reinsdorf, and I was fucking pissed. You know, like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, and she was like, oh, why? You don't like it? And I'm like, I got to fucking break it down. And she's like, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't have took the picture. You know? So, um, you know, I don't, I, I didn't grow up on the South Side. I grew up in the Northwest Side, Logan Square, Humble Park area, you know, but I've always had an affinity for the White Sox. That's why I go to watch my baseball. And it's fucked up because I love baseball. Baseball is my number one sport. I will sit here, you know, obviously because I'm a, a gambling addict and I have a fucking major illness. <laughs> I will sit here, you know, I was I will sit here and watch a, a, a Pirates fucking Rays game. But I love baseball, you know. So the fact that my the, the team I root for doesn't love it as much as I do. You know, I, I gotta, I gotta cut ties. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to be 35 years old and I live in Miami. There's plenty of shit I could do to spend my, to spend my fucking nights and my time than watching a shit product for an organization that has no aspirations of being taken serious and actually winning. Yeah, I mean, and I'm just gonna close with this. Like you said, I'm a big fan too. Like I've, I've had, you know, I've, the reason I became a base, I mean, a White Sox fan, really baseball fans, because of White Sox. I come from a family of mainly Cub fans. Like my mother from the West Side, she's a diehard Cub fan. Everybody knows West Side is usually, for the most part, root for the Cubs. Um, I that's actually a picture of me in a Cubs jersey, and she refuses to take it off the family wall because she's a Cub fan. So it's like I kind of feel like it's borderline uh, blackmail, but it's still up there. Uh, but I became a White Sox fan because my dad would take us to White Sox games. We always go to White Sox games in summer, 97, 98. And but the Frank Thomas, Frank Thomas signed my, my, my glove, you know, uh, Jose Valentin, uh, Ray Durham, like Paul Canerco, Maglio Donia. So we have these memories, but I refuse to let this team hurt me anymore they have beaten me into submission you win so until there is major changes what i mean by major changes is either jerry sells the team or he drops dead tomorrow one of the two i'm not going to be expecting anything i can't tell you the next time i'm gonna watch a ball game i don't know i i can't tell you when i will maybe maybe chris gets will put a somewhat respectful uh, team on the field i don't think he will but the thing that you know, I'm a Bulls fan. I'm sitting, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not I'm not ever gonna stop watching the Bulls. Now, the Bulls are the team that introduced me to sports, obviously because of Michael Jordan, but at least the Bulls fake act like they want to make the playoffs. Now they'll never win a championship again until they actually get an actual superstar, but at least they fake act like they want to make the playoffs. I've seen this team to play playoffs three times. My like my actual time remembering. I was five when 1993 happened. I don't really remember. I don't remember. 2000 that much either but this is what really is why i'm just able to team man i'm just I'm, I'm i'm fed up with it man so um let's just quickly get to our next point before we you know we we wrap this up we want to go a little over time today but just quickly on the, the 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 good team in chicago the chicago cubs they are um currently what's the record the losing right, the loser right now the losing right now, one to nothing. Uh, it's actually been a really good game. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. smallest last time I checked. Yeah, yeah. Zach, Zach Gallon and, and uh, Jamison Tyon. It was really a pitcher's duel. Um, yeah, but uh, so yeah, I mean, they're well, I'll say I this they're, they're 76 and 65. They lost last night to the Diamondbacks. Like I said they're losing one nothing right now in the bottom of the eighth. Uh, they're currently two games back of the Brewers for the NL Central and have a three game lead over Arizona for the second wild card spot. It'll be two if this lead holds on for the Arizona Cardinals. And I come from Cardinals for the Diamondbacks. Well, what do you think about the Cubs? Is, is this actually like a team that can do something in the playoffs? Or what, what's their trajectory in your opinion? I think they could. I think they could win a series, especially if you know if they if they get that wild card, they could definitely get into that first round. But um, more than anything, they, it's, it shows like the re. I don't want to call it. A, well, it was a rebuild. Um, it's it been was. successful. We can it say was that. Rebuild, yeah. We can, yeah, we can say that they one hundred percent made the right decision on every player they chose not to sign, which is rare. Except one. Except one. Uh, Who was Rizzo. the one? 
Schwarber, 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 Schwarber. Schwarber. I, but this is my thing with Schwarber, bro, because he's having like the weirdest season ever. Like I know he ever. is like he's he's like worse than Adam Dunn. Like, yeah, he hit he hit 40 bombs, but like hitting what is he hitting? Like 162 or something. It was something. No, yeah, like, that's one, very, what, ain't like 140. I thought it was worse 140. than that. It's, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's something, it's something crazy. And he leads yeah. off and he's got almost 40 home runs. <laughs> but you know, any any team will take them 40 home runs, and but any team will yeah. take that pop. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but, but like I said, besides Schwarber, they 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 uh made the right decision on every guy they chose not to sign. You know, even with you know not bringing back Strowman, I think that's a good decision. Like it's a reason he's bounced around the way he has. Like I don't think you commit long term to Strowman, so they they'll have the bread to spend. And we've seen them once again. They have a top five farm system in baseball. Like this is the you know second time we've seen this in the past what 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. But they've been able to when they've been able to build up a top five farm system. So I think this year is like kind of like what we talked about with the bears. This is a step in the right direction because now you are not only competing for a playoff spot, you may win the division. And so to go from that, then next year, you, I think you'll see them spend some money. Um, I don't know if how I, we've talked about them, you know, being in on Shohei, but I think even if they don't go in on Shohei with the recent injury and he's probably not going to pitch next year, um, they're definitely gonna make some moves, and you know, Dansby was the first step in that. Dansby's a leader, um, and that's that's my guy. Dansby's a monster to me, and you know, they've slowly but surely added more talent, and they got some good prospects coming. So, no, I think you know, outlook for for if you know if we would have had this conversation last year, and you know, essentially saying that the the Chicago Cubs and White Sox have flipped trajectories. Like nobody would have believed it. I probably like, would have laughed, yeah. but jokes on me. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I wanna I wanna shout out my boy, my one of my best friends, Debo. He sent me a screenshot that we had. He had since it was like before the season started, and he was giving me like the over under and a, a win projection for the for the Cubs. And I laughed at him because I was like, y'all didn't add no 15 win above replacement type of player. You know what I'm saying? He had them like winning like eighty something games and. You know, lo and behold, they're they're on the trajectory to, to surpass that. Um, they they they've successfully pulled off a rebuild, man. Within within two years, it's pretty fucking quick because they're back now competing for a division. They played really good baseball to end last last season. I want to say they won something crazy. <laughs> um, and Nick Madrigal almost hit a two run homer, but he's got to hit and the fucking. We, we were just talking about that yesterday. Me and Dante talking about that. That's really another high. person that they didn't develop. Oh That's yeah, another person that the White Sox didn't develop. That they took oh top t- t- top three, top five. You know what I'm saying? And he's playing pretty decent ball for them. So um, the one thing that I'm interested in is how do they build on this going forward after the off season? Because Cody Bellinger is back to being Cody Bellinger. But he will get paid, and he's not giving no discount. The same way Bengals fans thought Joe Burrow was giving a discount, Cody Bellinger is not going to give them no fucking hometown discount. And I promise you both of those New York teams will come calling. I would not be shocked if the Dodgers come calling. There's a lot of us. Uncer- come on home, boy. There's a lot of uncertainty right now in, with Shohei. And outside of Shohei, Cody Bellinger is the number two most prized free agent going yeah. into this year. So um, it's going to be interesting because if they do not land – if they do not resign Cody Bellinger, where do they go? Um, so I think they got the opportunity to definitely uh, where they are right now, pull off this division, and you know they're they're in, they're in position to hold on to a uh, to a playoff spot here in the wild card with the three, and uh, anything can happen in the playoffs. Definitely, man. Uh, I just, I'm, 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 I agree with y'all. Y'all watch more than I have. I've kind of you know tuned out a little bit. I'll be back for the playoffs, but um, we're gonna wrap this up. Goofy Mog of the week time. Uh, this is my first Goofy Mog of the week of the season. Uh, so for those of you who are not um up to what the Goofy Mog is, we got new people who are on here. The Goofy Mog is basically why I point a person out in Chicago. The word Goofy is the highest. Uh, disrespect in the land. So this week, my goofy mog of the week is Los Angeles Dodgers starting pitcher Julio Julio uh, Arias. Um, and he basically uh, got arrested once again 
uh, for domestic violence. This time, an incident at Expedition Park. For those of you who don't live in Los Angeles, Expedition Park is where LFC plays. Uh, it was uh, around the time LFC had their game against Inter Miami uh, with Messi. And uh, by the way, it was a, it was a huge uh, weekend in LA last weekend. It, the, the traffic was worse than usual. Messi was in town. There was the big Dodgers Braves game. Beyonce did like four shows. But during all that time, he decided to beat people up again. And he, this is the second time he's been arrested for. He got arrested for it in May 2019. He suspended 20 games. The case wasn't prosecuted by the L.A. city attorney after uh, Urias agreed to complete a 52-game, 52-week domestic violence counseling program. Uh, and new uh, information surfaced today um, via uh, Jeff Passan that there's actually video uh, that is going to be coming out that happened about the incident, which is going to uh, further even, uh, you know, complicate things for him my take on him is this he needs to be under the jail under under the jail there's no there's no um there's no room for guys like him in not just baseball and sports and i'm honestly tired of of, of men you know beating up women and being able to continue to play and, and and do things like that so i think he needs to get up out of it i think the dodgers if they have any shame need to cut ties with him right away i understand he's going to be a free agent he shouldn't be offered any money not just by the dodgers but by any team and i just really think they need to cut all ties and and from a you know from a baseball perspective it sucks for the dodgers because he was the only dude that they could actually pitch right now for them so that puts them in an even a uh, deeper situation but i just you know put all the love and support to his, I don't know if it was his girlfriend or his wife. I don't know which, if, if, if it was one of the two, but all our love and support to her. Um, but get that guy about the sport, man. I, I'm tired of clowns like that, man. So my goofy mug of the week, given to Julio, Julio Arias um, and everything that he has, uh, you know, brought to all this shit. So, man, so that, that's why I'm going to go with him, man. So that's all we got for y'all. For I'm not going to hold you. We, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Everybody who watched on YouTube, everybody who watched on our stream. Uh, if you missed the show, the audio will be up on the Barber's Chet Network podcast feeds uh, by tomorrow morning at the absolute latest. So we're going to have them split up uh, in, in both hours. You know, if you want to listen to just local hour, we're going to have both of those. Shout out to Herb Howard of the Bigs for joining us, man. Uh, shout out to Dante, man. Great production job. Let's give it up for Dante. <laughs> Amazing job. Uh, he's just gonna get better than that. Uh, Mikey is weak to him. He doesn't need you would not know that this dude has not done a lot of podcasts, a lot of shows before this. Mikey is doing uh, another great job this week, man. Shout out to Courtney. She'll be back next week, of course. We'll be doing Monday and Tuesday. Are we gonna back? To, we're gonna go into our original two show a week schedule. Uh, we're gonna try to you know make things a little different, make our Monday show different from our Friday show. So we're gonna brainstorm a little bit on that, man. So uh get in tune with us on Monday. We're gonna recap everything from week one, get you ready for Monday night football, uh, preview a little bit of week two with Thursday night football and all the games coming up on that. So uh shout out to anybody who listened, shout out to anybody who who, who retweeted, posted any clip, YouTube short. We did. Shout out to our guy, Mike Gibson, who takes care of the graphics. Shout out to my guy, Nikhil. He's our amazing video ed editor who puts in the hours and hours of time to show y'all clips and everything. So we're going to keep doing that. Shout out to HB Media. Shout out to my guys, Pavi, my guys, TPJ, who uh, you know per also produces this. And if you also missed the video, of course, the video will be on the Barber's Chat Net YouTube, but it will also be on the HB Media YouTube today. Shout out to all our HB Media fans. That's where we get a majority of our of our views and listeners. So shout out to the whole Hoops and Brews community because I know a lot of y'all mainly basketball fans, but y'all been messing with me and all the football content we bring. So, uh, Seven Night Dallas season nine, we back this Sunday. Me and Flows will be live from Soldier Field. We'll be giving y'all. Um, our post game reactions. We're gonna do a pre game video. I'm probably gonna do it right outside. Um, Soldier Field. We're gonna have the uh post game video, of course. Usual subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barbers Chat Network. Because if you want to hear Saving Night the Hallis first, you need to subscribe to Saving Night the Hallis Tier, which is only five dollars. You will get the podcast on the same night. Everybody else will get it either on Monday or Tuesday. So subscribe to that. Mikey Dante, anything y'all want to say before we get up out of here? Bad down. Bad down. Let's go, Braves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We will holler at y'all on Monday. We up out of here, man. I'm not going to hold you.
getting paper on these player haters. Old news, money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line, so I'm not gonna.